It's October 12th, 2023, and these are your headlines. Sit down, shut up, and don't ask questions. That's essentially what Texas House Speaker Dade Phelan said this morning to Representative Tony Tinderholt when he attempted to ask the speaker some parliamentary inquiries. Now, parliamentary inquiries, these are questions that are asked by any member to the speaker from the back microphone. On Monday, for example, earlier this week, Representative Tinderholt asked the status of the House's accounting of the costs of the Paxton impeachment. He didn't get an answer, by the way, when he did ask those questions. Today was different, though. Before he could even ask a question, Speaker Phelan read off a pre-written statement warning Representative Tinderholt that his questions could get him banned from asking further inquiries. And when Tinderholt asked what kind of precedent this was taken from, well, that's when he struck. Phelan struck him down, accusing him of being dilatory or wasting time. He banned him from making parliamentary inquiries without coming to him first off the microphone, away from the cameras, without prior approval. This is huge. Notably, by the way, Democrats in the Texas House routinely engage in dilatory actions designed to stall House Republican uh, bills and House proceedings, particularly when deadlines for legislation are imminent. You see that all the time. You see parliamentary inquiries used to wish some members happy birthdays, make jokes, etc. Nobody seems to have a problem with it until Tony Tinderholt does it. And when I say this is huge, I mean that we have not seen this kind of behavior before in years. Joe Strauss, Dennis Bonin, speakers that were hostile to conservatives, they didn't do this. They didn't do this to members. Joe Strauss did not tell members that they could not ask questions. And yet here we have the Speaker of the House, Dade Phelan, escalating his war against conservative members in a way that we have not seen since perhaps uh, some of the actions we saw from Speaker Tom Craddock back in 2007 when he wouldn't recognize members who wanted to make a motion to replace him as Speaker. We've talked a little bit about that before. But it's important to note, Phelan has never imposed against the Democrats a rule similar to the one he imposed on Tinderholt today. Now, Representative Tinderholt soon responded on a post on social media calling Phelan more tyrannical than Joe Strauss ever was. I have to agree. Attorney General Ken Paxton, meanwhile, likened Phelan's actions to a totalitarian government where the leadership controls and bans free speech. Now, after referring a few bills and resolutions, the House adjourned till Monday. Meanwhile, in the Senate, well, as we're talking right now and recording this, they're working hard, passing school choice legislation. Looks like that's about to be passed through. There's border security legislation ready to go. COVID mandate legislation ready to be voted on. You could very well see the Senate move forward and pass most of the special session items by the end of today or tomorrow. But the House is adjourned till Monday. They'll take the weekend off. This should concern anybody who's concerned about passing conservative legislation during the special session. As the clock continues to run out, we will see just how frustrated some of the House members continue to get with the Speaker's leadership. Speaking of Tony Tinderholt and Ken Paxton, we have an update to a story from yesterday. Earlier this week, Representative Tinderholt filed a resolution calling on the House of Representatives to extend a formal apology to Paxton for its, quote, political weaponization of the impeachment process. Now the resolution has a new joint author, Representative J.M. Lozano. This comes as a surprise to a lot of people, notably, Lozano is the chair of the House Committee on Urban Affairs, as appointed by Phelan earlier this year. He was also among the 60 Republican members that voted to impeach Paxton back in May. Matt Rinaldi, the chairman of the Republican Party of Texas, commended Lozano for his support of the apology resolution, calling it a politically courageous position. Could this be a one-off thing? Maybe J.M. Lozano uh, is, is the only member that will come out along with Tinderholt in favor of this? Possibly. Or could this be symbolic that perhaps among the ranks and even among Phelan's own leadership, of which Lozano is a part of as a chairman in the Texas House, perhaps they too are being frustrated with the position that Speaker Phelan is putting them in, especially in the light of the Paxton impeachment sham of just a few weeks ago. Lastly, cities, counties, and school districts across the state are placing big bonds on the November ballot that would add billions to the local government debt already owed by Texas taxpayers. 
All bond debt must be repaid with interest by local property taxpayers. Texas local governments currently owe $186 billion in outstanding debt that their residents are obligated to repay with property taxes. Any new debt approved by voters will be added to the current debt levels. So it's important to remember any sort of bond, that is a property tax increase, whether or not they want to admit it or not. Not only are there bonds on the ballot, but at least 28 local governments, mostly school districts, are asking voters to approve tax increases higher than the amounts allowed by state law. If passed, schools voter approval tax rate elections will absorb state mandated property tax relief back into the district. So even though we have the legislature passing some amount of property tax relief, you still have some school districts, cities, counties, etc., wanting to abuse that, wanting to raise property taxes, hike them further than before and wipe away that property tax relief. Early voting, by the way, starts October 23rd. Election day is November 7th. You can check out more stories from today at texasscorecard.com. No ads, no paywalls, no government grants, and no corporate masters. Just real news for real Texans. This is Texas Scorecard.